How are you guys doing? We got Charles. <laughs> oh, sh**. We don't have Charles. <laughs> what the f*** <laughs> am I trying to say? We got Willie. Willie is there. Hey, guys. Willie is back. Uh, this video is also sp uh, sponsored by Field of Greens. I'm, I can't find my words apparently right out the gate here. So we just started an episode a second ago. Thank God we got about 10 minutes into it. Realized, hey, look, I wasn't recording anything. So take two. Willie. <laughs> Willie is back. It's exciting as I can be. Uh, he's going to be here for the next three weeks or so. He's got a brain problem, if most of you guys do not know. He's living on the verge of death every single day. But thank God we get to spend the next few days with him because uh, I, lo I love the guy. But he's, he was just in uh, Turkey and Syria, and he broke his foot in a car accident and had to go back home. That is what you guys have missed up on since he's left. Yeah. That's right. about it. That's literally it. That's Turkey's what the earthquake. Syria's the earthquake. <laughs> broke my foot. Couldn't get in the hospital because of all the – like the hospitals are so crowded there, um, which I had the – the least serious issue in the world at the time. I'm like yeah. limping. Um, Which is kind of funny because you have the most serious issue in the world and you also have the least serious issue in the yeah, world. No, no one knows. Or no, I don't know one, but very few people know about the brain tumor. So it's like, like, but you being... wouldn't know if you met me at like a pub, you'd be like, no. You know what's kind of funny? My mother-in-law, she says, he seems like the most healthy sick man I've ever met. I, yeah. <laughs> Not really. My, my liver's probably fine. Really? That's nothing it's to do with nothing, nothing to do with that. It's just the it's just the, the alcohol. He's just kind of funny. She's like, hey, he eats well. He he he's got some weight on him, and he's always so happy. I'm like, I don't know. He's just fucking willy. It is what it is, you know. Man, my mates reckon that it's not going to get me. They're like, bro, <laughs> something else is going to get you. You're going to die of something weird. It's not. It's not going to be the brain thing. No, I the brain thing. I hope it's not. It's a sh way to go. Yeah. God, that is a sh way to go. You're right. Thanks for reminding me. No, <laughs> no, that's good. For well, those who don't know, like that's a, a, ba a large backstory of mine is I did nothing online. And then I got diagnosed with a brain tumor following uh, a deployment to Afghanistan. And I started an Instagram. Um, and I just wanted to like tell people about that because when you get diagnosed something serious, you know, you've got to tell your friends and family and all this, every medical update every day. And I'm so sick of telling like 50 people. So I was like, I'll just post it on here. And then people just like, because I had this real like, you know, the military's just savage. Like how we joke about things. All guys are. And I was in the military at the time. And it was just, people just like stroke a chord with people. And this guy's just taking the piss out of this. Like, you know, it's, it was my mates. When I started chemotherapy, them getting my shampoo and putting it on eBay and stuff. Selling it and shit like that, you know. The day I was diagnosed was my 21st birthday. Oh, sorry, 22nd birthday, March 10th, 2018. And... And the boys had a surprise party and change it from Willie's party, like birthday party, to Willie's death party. So I had, <laughs> I'm, I'm dead serious asking the lads there, I had dried tears on my face from my diagnosis, like um, with my doctor. And it was still to the party and Willie's death party. And it was just like, we don't care. Get over yourself. And that changed my like, attitude the whole time. But it's, yeah, it's, a, it's one thing people should know about me, I guess. Yeah, it makes it, our jokes make sense. Yeah, 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 that's a good way to put it because they probably thought I was being a little bit harsh out there. I'm like, God, this guy's a fucking asshole. Yeah, yeah this guy's like, an answer. This guy's a fucking asshole. That, that's <laughs> not the way it is. You know, we're going to change the way we do the podcast a little bit as well because usually I'm really like uh, cut and dry, tell you guys what this is. We're going to be, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be more loose, conversational, conversational and not, it's because they're going to have a bunch of facts and of course and give you guys a mapping and all you guys are used to. But we're just going to say fuck it and we're going to do it the way we want to do it. How about that? And this is the way I kind of want to do it. So, I'll tell you guys right now, China and Russia. We'll start off with that one. Because that one's always... You know what? We'll just start with China. We'll start there. We'll go ahead and just fucking start right there. at that gate. Yeah, yeah, him and Putin hung out. I think there was like a... Do we have to kiss on his foot? Did you... Was there like a picture? You know... Like he, looked like he's sucking him off. Okay, it's a little different. <laughs> <laughs> they kiss on his foot. Will you, will, tomorrow, can you get this TV to where I can actually post stuff up on this so we can actually see what we're looking at? That would be pretty good. So we can cast it. I know you just came yeah. in a couple hours ago. I just want to yeah, cast it. Yeah, I'm so jet lagged. So. Yeah, so, so, you know, I, I just want to have it all up there so we can actually see. Anyway, there was an image which we'll just throw up on the screen. Have you seen it? Yeah. Putin's down yeah. there. He looks like he's literally sucking him off. But they say, what'd you say it was for? Uh, it was for transportational stuff or what would you say it was no, for? No, no. There's all this like political stuff about like import export stuff yeah, and that's how, that's know, a, that, yeah. weaponizing sanctions, stuff like that. Yeah, well, it, yeah weaponizing it sanctions. four and a half hour talk apparently. But. Four and a half hour talk. Yeah. Well, if you, you cut out the, the guys that have to literally, like... I, translate. Translate. Tweet. I mean, it's really probably a couple-hour talk. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, it's 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 a big thing because those two, they're still big players, and China especially yeah, is a China. big, big player. And they're a big player for the Western economies. Western import-export is huge. So I didn't get me started on that. They're a big export for you guys, too. Massive. Massive for you massive. guys. Way bigger for us than yeah, you. Yeah, way bigger so for you. So Australia is... 
when people say Australia's a Western country, you're talking our ideology, not yeah. where we are like in the world. But I actually put you guys more or less in the California ideology. Yeah. Depends. If you go to Melbourne, Sydney, yeah. hell yeah. Yeah, that's one thing I want to say. Is don't think about like what Australia looks like in the media here. <laughs> it looks it's, like that. It's wrong. <laughs> is, there's two sides. And I'm like, well, they're polar opposites. Is Everyone talks about war crimes, like Australian soldiers war crimes. And they talk about like us being like these. War ultra, crimes are like old when? Like, liberal. like we, Afghan. Afghan war yeah. crimes. Oh, yeah. It's a really, really big thing. I get hit up about it like all the time. When, can you tell me when you guys had war crimes in Afghanistan? When? We didn't. But there's some oh, okay. incidents that they have did. To, well, the people that have asked about the incidents were families of those killed in Afghan following these incidents. So the, the evidence is very... But I'm actually doing a piece um, with some guys from the 2nd Commando Regiment and the SAS um, on this breaking things down because some of it is... Some of it gets like oversimplified. Like, you know, like free fire lines in like a vehicle checkpoint. And if you talk about that in the media, who you don't know about military, you'd be like, oh, that's a war crime. Like, no, it's not. You have a free fire line for a reason. This motorbike or this vehicle crosses that line. You can line them up. And... It's a long thing, but people either think Australia is just like this ultra liberal, you like LA place or that. I and I'm like, no, we're yeah. not. We're not that. Like 99 percent of us are like, you know, just chill. But it, sorry, where I was going was most people say Australian is a Western country with an Eastern um, economy because I believe it's over 30 percent of our total like GDP is Chinese money. So we have massive export to China. Um, one of the big ones actually is foreign students coming to our universities from China. And that's big because it's pay up front too. So it's, you know, you want to be a doctor, it's pay the full degree up front for the, I don't know, I don't know doctors, four, six years or something. And there's massive money in that. So a lot, like so much of our economy is controlled by Chinese money and foreign investment. We have ports, we have, um, and th this is where a lot of people get very suspicious and it depends. And this gets political of like the, right wing will say one thing and the left will say another about there are airfields in Australia that are Chinese owned that are military grade airfields but what is military grade well it's just a big runway same with ports and it, it's it's hard with foreign ownership but China's a big player and in that region the Pacific a giga player I, I am so I'm just in a reading on this guy's this guy's here talking about what's going on in Bakhmut and oh, yeah. how he I don't want to read the entire thing look how yeah, old this is my god what he's what he's claiming is that that everything's happening in Bakhmut right now is the same thing that happened in like Kharkiv and Kherson. And they're saying that, or more or less Kherson is what he's saying, that, that they're going to get pushed back. I guess I'll talk about it here in a little bit, but go back to China mm. and him basically sucking off Putin inside of the, their version of the White House, whatever. I don't know, what, what is the Kremlin? Kremlin. I mean, that's what, that's what the building's actually called. No. That's uh, what I'm saying. What's, there, what's it's? I wouldn't know what the actual building is. Yeah, but yeah, it's called the Kremlin. Kremlin, whatever. It doesn't really matter. They're so going to be, they're going to be so strongly tied now more than they've ever been over the last... I guess they've been doing these things with Iran for those drills they, they held last week. I don't know what they called. In the, I think it was in the Sea of Oman or something. They, um, uh, well, I don't even... They don't really matter with the drills because we're doing the same thing right now with Taiwan. And actually, no, excuse me, South Korea. South Korea. And we pissed off North Korea. We pissed off Wo Kim where he decided to shoot some more stuff off in the air, which is a whole other subject by itself. I don't think the people inside of North Korea realize how powerful... The South Koreans are by themselves. Oh, the South Korea is incredibly. Powerful. I don't. I don't. Like, I. I don't think they can comprehend because they're not really. <sighs> I, I don't want to put it. I don't, here in America, the West way, I would. I would. I would describe this would be a very small town, a single A school, thinking how power. You know what that means, do you? A very small school. Yeah. Bro. And how powerful they are inside of their area. They're like mm -hmm. number one, but then they go play like a f eight five A school here in yeah. Dallas. They're like, oh, now I realize we are not that good. Yeah. That's how I feel like North Korea. That's that's how much like. <sighs> What's the word I'm trying to I'm trying to use? I was a construct like their their viewpoint on it is not clear. Yeah, very murky. Yeah. And well, Russia comes with experience, and they haven't had experience. <laughs> they haven't had any experience whatsoever, especially recently. And that's what's kind of funny. about you're looking at the the, the the technology currently that Russians are using inside of Ukraine is so like that age still, mm. like at least the majority of it. Yeah. It's so, so like old school. There is some very some stuff we're seeing pop up more and more though, like the hypersonics and things like that. But they haven't really. Why haven't they started using that stuff? No, they're using it. Yeah. But what about China? So if China's getting involved, do you think China's ever going to get involved militarily? Is the question. Well, it, it the whole point with China, the the hard bit with China and Russia, is what is lethal aid and what is non lethal aid, and 
this is a point which I think we really need to touch on because people will go, well, you know, lethal aid to Russia, blah, 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 from China. And I think, I think Russia really, Russia have lethal stuff, but their implementation of that on that non-lethal front, which is more the combined arms and the command and control, is where Russia really lacks, or at least lacked at the beginning. Like, in my opinion, if Russia had really good command structure and decent combined arms, they would have been very successful earlier on. But where we think saw things fall over was logistics, command and control, and combined arms. They were the three massive downfalls of the Russian forces. Straight leadership. Straight leadership. Yeah. Well, that's leadership. command. So yeah, just straight leadership that's issues it, all the way That's through. where it collapsed. But where, where I bring into this is... You know, people will say, well, if China gives lethal aid, and I'm like, they don't have to give lethal aid to have a big influence here. What they could give is non-lethal aid of command help or um, combined arms help or, you know, um, S- like, so intelligence gathering, and which I'm sure they're already doing. I'm sure they are. But as far as non-lethal stuff, oh, sorry, sorry, as far as lethal stuff, it's been limited, and most would say, no, there was a thing out today about $12 million worth of drone parts have gone to Russia from China. $12 million in a in a war scheme is is a drop in the ocean, yeah. really. Um, <clears throat> but it, it's going to be interesting to see where that support starts and ends between Russia and China because we know China can make a heap of stuff. We know they have a heap of stuff. We know they've got decent stuff. You know, people love to compare technology. They love to, oh, well, you know, the, the American F-22 is far better than this Chinese, you know, Gen 4 plus, Gen 5 aircraft. Like, yeah, yeah, it is. But you're comparing absolute, you know, pinnacle technologies. We've seen in war, what really matters is just how many artillery shells can you just lay down? And we know that China has a shitload of that stuff. Yeah. And and China solve a problem for Russia. I, I was thinking the other day that, you know, Russia's biggest problem is actually China. They solve a lot of issues for them. You know, if you think about what Russia's big, big thing is, is they've got natural resource, oil, gas, things like that. What does China need? They need stuff like that. What does China have? Massive population... And, you know, a large country, you know, about the size of America, but a huge population within that. What, is it, what does Russia have? Largest landmass of the world. And, you know, a shrinking population. Well, it will shrink soon, Russia's population, with replacement rates. And a lot of people are saying Russia's biggest player is China. This could be a long play to get to their stuff. But vice versa, we'll see on what that flows into Russia's economy. China's a big player. China is a big player in this. They're a big player in the world. And not to say you need to be scared of China, but they can do a lot of damage. Junk science. That's what doctors call many of those fruit and vegetable supplements. Now, junk science, because of the extracts, a common produced department store like fruits and vegetables, like with few health benefits. I actually take Field of Greens. You guys see this, right? You guys have seen me talk about this multiple times on this channel because it's whole organic fruit and vegetables, not just watered down supplement. And it's backed by Better Health Promise. Yes, a Better Health Promise. They back that. So each of green inside of Field of Greens was actually specifically chosen to support vital organs like your heart, lungs, and kidney health. Hey, my guy over here, he needs it for his kidney. Well... And your liver. Probably do. You probably yeah. need that quite a bit. He needs to be taking this stuff every single day. Now, others support your immune system, your blood pressure, metabolism, and healthy weight loss. It's going to be good for you guys. Check it out. I don't eat as healthy as I should. It clearly, my boy over here probably doesn't either. No. And that's why we got to take Field of Greens. So like me, you want to look like you want to look good? You want to feel good? <laughs> hey, healthier, faster ways to get more energy. This is the way you want to do right here. Hey, but your best proof is going to be with your next checkup when the doctor says, whatever you're doing, it's working. Keep it up. Damn, Willie, this is a good one for you. When you go to the doctor next time, tell him you're just absolutely just chugging this. Well, maybe not just say chugging. Yeah. I probably shouldn't be chugging it. but yeah, not, not to blow him out of the water, but I don't think you're going to get that affects a brain. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you guys can start with 15% off right now. Go to uh, fieldofgreens.com. Use promo code ROB at checkout. That's fieldofgreens.com. Use promo code ROB to save 50% off your first order right now. Hey, fieldofgreens.com. Promo code ROB at checkout. Now, my question is, we're never going to see their, their, their men on the ground. Now, leadership is going to be one thing that they're going to have to... I, You know what? I, I Okay, let's go back to leadership for one second. Where China can actually really, really help the Russians entirely is... I don't want to say bringing on some of their, their knowledge for war because they clearly don't have a lot of experience in actually on-the-ground stuff. And we both know that the stuff you train on kind of goes out the window when things actually... Some stuff actually really does start to happen. But they could actually help them on the leadership side of things with... Imagine they came in and they, they, they got rid of this Soviet mindset of how they treated their men on the ground and they started using a different type of, I'm not going to say Western-esque type 
fighting because we know that's not going to ever happen in their, in their mentality. Cause right now they're still good at just throwing a thousand men to the fire and being okay with it. Yeah. As we've seen one, the entire fucking war. That's yeah. literally the entire fucking war. That's all that, that, that's it. It's just numbers. Just, <laughs> that's all it is is fucking numbers. But the Ukrainians right now, they're building up. A, um, I've talked about this. I think last week they're building up right now. A, a, a hundred thousand is what we'll call it. That's what they've called it. A hundred thousand troop that has literally just been trained by the West over mm-hmm. there in the UK. So they're building up a hundred thousand men. Now the hundred thousand men I've said, I've taken, I would take any day over a million Russian trash Soviet esque type fighting any day. I mean, cause those men, you're going to think they're going to, they're actually going to give a f- about their lives. Now if the Chinese, are they going to bring that over to the Russians is my question. Do you think any, uh, are they going to change uh, their tactics at all? I don't think so. Um, I, I really don't know. China, China need to keep relations with the West too. Because at the end of the day, I talk about that, oh, like our economy is, you know, heavily reliant on China, but theirs is too, you know, as far as they need to be able to import and export from us. That's what China need. And this equivalent sanctions we put on Russia, we put on China, would have major effects, but it would have more effect on us as well. So it would be, that would be something we would really notice both home and they would notice massively as well. I don't know if the number is quite as high as 100,000 coming from the UK. Not really sure, but that's what we're going to see. Is we're going to see big, large trained, you know, troops, big numbers coming from you know NATO standard, and in against the Russians, and we will see. We'll see it, you know, how that actually plays out because we're going to see that. We're going to see over the next you know twelve months of this. Because if you ask me, this war's going nowhere quick. Um, oh, going nowhere quick is understand. It's not going anywhere right now. Like I can literally show you like Bachman. I'm going to show you that right now. You know what? Fuck it. We're going to move over here to Mapping because yeah. I really want to show you this. Look at this. I mean, you, you've you've known this for as long as you've been covering this this war, unfortunately. Um, From day one. All right, so the, we're looking at Bachman. right here. So you've actually been here. You've been to this fucking shit hole yeah, right here. Times. This this little shit hole of the town that's literally now nothing. Correct. Well, there's nothing there. The now. problem the problem is it was actually like a small, nice city little area. I'm talking about now, right now. It's now if right you now. look at the drone footage now, it's just been. It's flat. an absolute. Shit there's nothing that's there. how that's how russia fights they that's what i'm saying there, there's literally it's nothing there they've turned it into a fucking yeah. just a, a which right you would ask the question of why why are both rubble. sides throwing so many men into um why if if, if, if you say that this is you know it's a small broken down why are so many sides absolutely it wasn't a before sides. they did it is no, what i'm saying no no it wasn't I'm, this is like mariupol mariupol wasn't a shithole either I've was it been mariupol too mariupol that's what i'm saying it wasn't a shithole before they went in and it did what you ask about mariupol i What's like that? i really like mariupol very industrial it looked like something at star wars man really? yeah it was real <laughs> very industrial um but but this this area as well like i say now is you know it, it's very it's quite sad because if you look at the google maps um photographic like street view of that versus some of the geolocation photos from drones or guys on the ground and it's just been completely, you know, but it's destroyed. Out. I know. I've, I've looked yeah. at all the footage here. It looks like it looks like you're on Mars. It looks it's just, it, it turned into a robot. Is what it is. And the only reason I don't know this whole line right here is not going to shift a ton. And I'm sure you can figure that why there's a, there's a river that flows right there. So they're never going to yeah. push west from that spot. But they've been closing in on this northern side for I don't know how last two weeks or so they've been kind of closing this yeah. gap down and yeah. they've actually over the last like three days they've actually expanded here but now look at this they almost have control of these main routes all these routes that lead out of there yeah well they've, they've pushed up pretty much to that um road that goes through Cromove, um as well as that dam up in the north and on the south they're controlling that road that runs i guess direct chasse of yar so as far as roads in and out it's getting very very limited and if you look at the condition of those Sort of back roads it's now. Not good. It's, it's not good. There's another road, by the way, that's somewhere yes, in this vicinity. But, but I don't it, know where it's the, at. The thing is with that is if you talk about bitumized roads or especially muddy roads, it's dug, it's look everywhere. at what a tank, a tracked yeah. vehicle, like you put a tracked vehicle down a bitumized road, it doesn't take many until it rips it up. So the conditions are getting worse and worse in the mud. But if we know that this area is now turned into, a, like I, I use the term shithole because it, it has, it really has. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a pity. So I guess a lot of people are going to take offense to that when I mean, I don't mean that the city itself. It, how do I want to put this? The rush to the f***ing turn it into literally nothing, which I'm, 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 I know it's maybe a strategical advantage in certain areas, but it really has. I don't know. It's hard. And it, it is an area you know, that does have massive value to both sides to hold. You know, Ukraine, it's very defensible. Um, 
so they can hold it because the guns in all um, deflated positions, like the artillery pieces. Uh, but Russia's pushing up through it now, and it, it's holding a lot longer than a lot of people are thinking, than a lot of people did think. Or a lot of people, even myself included. I, I mean, what are we on, six months now? Yeah, something like that. Six months is absolutely insane. I'm actually going to download another map of it right now yeah. so I can, I can go expand out even farther. So, Advika... Advika is going to be one, Abdi, yeah. Abdika. Abdika is going to be one of the others that they've been getting their absolute just teeth kicked in for the last six months. That is the Russians mm. on the southern side, especially. But now they're pushed up on the northern side pretty heavily. Which give me one second, I'll pull that up. Yeah, Russia is having some level of success surrounding that region. There. Just on the just on, just on the northern side, but that's also on the the Bakhmut side as well. Let me let me scroll through here and get a different map so we can actually pop out. All right, so now now peeling back just a tad bit. This is what it looks like looking at the the Bakma region. That's why we're gonna get that up on that TV so I can actually yeah. just cast it directly to you. The only, I mean, you've driven these routes through here. Mm. I know that all this is all hills all through here. Yeah. I'm not gonna call them like massive hilltops, it's but like I, rolling hills. It's yeah. rolling hills, but it is enough to make it a little bit more difficult to push down through here. Now, I was reading something this morning about this whole strategy that the, the, the Ukrainians are using about Bakhmut itself. I know Bakhmut is destroyed, but the area around it is, I mean, it's got a lot of pitting and just from artillery and all. It's not like, all these other areas are actually okay all throughout, mm -hmm. like here and here and here. These are all okay. But my question is, are they, do, are they really doing the same thing that they're doing in Hearson or Hearson? Where they allowed them to advance, they push through. I don't know. That's, that's, mm -hmm. that's what some people are believing and I don't know if I could see it. To a certain extent. When I mean, we saw the stuff up inside of uh, what, um, like Lyman and all the way through all that, all that all area, that's the same kind of idea that people are saying that the Ukrainians are utilizing here inside this area. I don't know how true that is because of the amount of casualty I've seen taken inside of this area from both sides. Yeah. It's not it's not the same type of it was down in Hirson or down in Lyman and all there because of the amount of casualty rate we've seen is so, so fucking high. And I know for a fact, I know for a fact the Ukrainians are struggling to get artillery rounds into this area, which if you don't have artillery inside of this area, you're going to be struggling to actually be able to have any type of yeah. real, any, anything happen. This is, the, this is the thing is, I'm not saying that they're not, is some, there could be some greater play here, but it just seems like the amount of casualties and the amount of time that there isn't some play. Um, I don't know, there could be, but... Russia, especially in the, the north areas of Bakhmut, is having success. So, uh, and I'm meaning on the uh, further north. Um, You're not talking about anywhere we're looking at right here. So We're not talking about this area. Yeah, I'm meaning like that area. You're so they are you know, right bellowing here. out yes, to the are. northwest. They have been what, pushing pretty good through yes, this area. Which which could mean that they that they can, well, could but limit a further counter. But they're not them. right through here. No, that ground's very open um, on the downward slope in the south too, I believe. So it, it is very, um, that's very difficult ground to get. This is high right here. I know this is also very high on this side yeah. as well. I know this, especially right here, I know they have a pretty decent trudging system on this side. That's why I think that this pocket will remain open for a while. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm not sure how long we'll actually see that um, stay open, but I, th I think we will see that close at some point. I know Russia is having some problems with their guns at the moment in there. Um, so a friend of mine on the ground there has been saying the biggest biggest thing we're seeing with Russian artillery is, now I'm not an artilleryman, so anyone who's arty can call me out and say I'm a flog, um, which is fine. But the more charge you put an artillery around, so the further it goes, the quicker it wears out in your barrels. Mm. Now all the Wagner group and the guns in those areas, apparently they're having um, like they're a lot of problem issues with their barrels. So they're not wanting to fire the guns as far. So they're trying to bring their guns closer to, lead, to have the barrel survive a longer time. So that's why Russia's artillery isn't having the effect we may expect to see in that region. Although he says they are solving this issue, but it's slowly happening with, with these artillery pieces. So I guess we'll, we'll see exactly how that's going to look. But, you know, in that, but as you said, you know, both sides have taken huge casualties, massive, massive casualties. And... You know, it's become from, it's got both tactical and symbolic advantages in that region. If you scroll south there, out of Bakhmut, as we're looking through here, this is another area they're actually getting a little bit of, um, I'm going to say, ground in just north of Advika. Yeah. Avdivka is, well, potentially the next 
sort of pocket, sort of like buckwood that could be isolated or surrounded. So, so something important people need to realise is pe- people think surrounding is, you know, sur- being surrounded and isolated can be essentially the same thing. So surrounded is, you know, you're fighting on 360. But if you can, if, if an area is isolated, you can't get stuff in and out, logistics, whatever, it's the essentially the same thing on the battlefield. For the soldiers, it's the same thing as being surrounded, essentially. And Avdivka, I know, is in a pretty hard situation at the moment with not many routes open in or out. And that actually came from today, a video um, from one of the lead journalists from the Kiev Independent was in Avdivka, and he spoke fairly openly and of course, he's a very Ukrainian, very pro-Ukrainian source, very openly about how the situation in Avdivka is deteriorating very quickly. It's interesting too. That map doesn't specifically show it, but down to the uh, southeast, there's sort of a massive um, uh, like road network where it all meets, big intersection. That border on that is actually the border since 2014. So if you look on um, like the ISW map, it'll show it in like black, I believe, which is 2014 area. So that area hasn't actually advanced since then at all on a pocket of that but to the north and south he's having some uh territorial uh, changes this is the one they just took over the last i don't know a couple days or couple so days, yeah that's a that's that is the chunk they just took which actually that's a pretty significant chunk due to the fact they haven't really done anything in this area the entire war has been going on literally nothing through here yeah so my, my friend who's following it fairly closely there and people know him i guess by soldier x um through some stuff he kicked up a bit of a storm but is he's, he's concerned about if Avdivka and Bakhmut fall, um, how will that then change the rest of the front? And he says that there could be, there is potential in a, in a collapse of that front line um, pretty quickly if, if those two fall. So we'll see. But it, it's a it's an interesting thing. And you know, there's dug-in units. There's, there's problems on both sides of logistics and command. And we've seen that through so many things translated. And there's so much differing information coming out and people are listening to one side of this you know you've got people that are know that area is fine it'll never fall and then you've got people listening to Prigozhin so which is also an issue and this is why you need you need to take you know sort of information especially online with a grain of salt and you know assess it for yourself but you how many people in Australia actually give a shit about the Ukrainian war right now I don't know um I'm, I'm ske- my view is skewed because you know I well one I talk about this a lot and I have a military, all my mates are military. So I guess my, the group of people I hang out with do, but I think wider, not really. Um, and so it's the same I think that's, pity, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Like nobody here in America gives, like I said this before, to be honest with you, no one gives a fuck in America. No one does. Yeah. There's only like, I, I would say. The things trend in the media for an amount of time. Look at, look at everything that trends. That's and, it. No one really know, People care for a few days. Like, look at Turkey. Like Turkey that was like a th- that tens was like a of twenty hour thing. It like, was like twenty hours, maybe, yeah. maybe not even a whole day. I would even give it a news coverage. It, yeah, it was, and then there was some people, and I was I was very lucky to. I actually got invited to um, the Australian Turkish Association and spoke at that after just to get some like they wanted some some of the speakers on the ground, and they were disappointed that they was like no one cares. You know, there's been tens and tens of thousands of people killed, and people I know that in those areas where Turkey had those earthquakes, they just had like major flooding through there. And there's millions of people living in tents. And, stuff. and this, this is the pity with news. But this is why the media is shifting to where, you know, you are or I am with, you know, things like this online. Because there are a lot of people who care. You know, like America or Australia as a whole, percentage-wise, may not give a But around the world, there are millions of people who care. And, you know, guys like you or I and a lot of other people do this, tap into those and, and try and supply people with information as well as we can. So, well, I was asking you that for a reason because I, I brought this up multiple mm-hmm. times. Because you look at if America doesn't care, then Ukraine's f- that's a problem. So, yeah, that's very true. You, at, there's not a person at, in this world that cannot agree with me on that. At the end of the day, the real player calling the shots is the states. If, if the states were to say to Ukraine, you need to figure a solution to this, it would either be suicide or it would end. And you know, at the end of the day, that's what you get. That's what comes to the territory of pri- trying to be the world police. And America is. And at the end mm-hmm. of the day, whether you love it or hate it, it doesn't matter. America has the most powerful military in the world and polices the world. Now, in a lot of instances, I think America should stay the f*** out of it in a lot of places around the world. But, you know, in this conflict, America's dove in head first. Um, limited to a degree, though, with limited stuff. Like what America could supply to Ukraine is 
not even in the ballpark of what they have supplied to Ukraine. No, we've given nineties tech and no men, so it's literally nothing. Well, even if even if you took the men out of it, you know, like no, the amount about, of it's, equipment. It's nineties tech, though. Yeah. I mean, yeah. You, you, what did you say? Whether they're, now they're going to get A ones. So the, uh, I'm not exactly sure what's happening with the M1A twos, but the problem is, and we spoke about this last on the last cross was the M1A two Abrams is they're being built like, and it's going to take a long time. People are saying up to twelve months before they're built, people in training, and the and M1A twos on the ground. Now we know that times of the essence in this, so there's a lot of talk and speculation today that they're going to get um, older M1A one Abrams and deliver them to Ukraine now. The question in this that I haven't seen answered uh, by any credible source because it's been both ways is, is it the export variant of the M1A1 that has the normal armour or is it the American variant of the M1A1? With the reactive... With with the um, the plenty uranium yeah. composite armour stuff. So I, should, I actually don't know, but you know it is confirmed that they're going to get deliver those. But in the same breath, America, you know, they deliver numbers 10, 20, they're talking about. When... You and I know that America, if realistically, if they would, we wanted to deliver 5,000, that would be doable. We've got thousands now, sitting instead of literally just sitting there. Now, how much can we deliver? How much can Ukraine actually uh-huh. take on the delivery? And this is what I spoke to a, another gentleman there about was, he's like, yeah, but you've got you to gotta remember that we can deliver, people can just, we can just throw stuff in. But at the end of the day, a country needs to actually be able to keep up with training and delivery of that. And that that's difficult. But I think the big one with America at the moment holding back is is fighter aircraft and some other technology. So that's where I think we'll see a big shift is in fighter aircraft. They did give those, were they get MiG-29s or 20? They're MiG-29s. So MiG-29 they're, they're, they're fulcrums yeah. from Poland and... It was, it was like was four like or five of them. It wasn't very money. It wasn't so Poland to like, delivered yeah. four yeah, and four. they're delivering another 12, I believe. But they, it's not known what condition they're actually in. Um, and one of the other Eastern Bloc countries... Oh, sorry. Slovakia, I think is delivering theirs as well and getting um, they're getting some compensation from the EU and America. And it hasn't actually been said what exactly that compensation is. But the UK has said it will supply air cover for any country that wants to deliver their fighter aircraft from UK F-35s. So they're not going to give you an F-35, but if someone tries to fly <laughs> through your airspace, we'll shoot it down. So there's that. And that, that will be, I believe, a little bit like the tanks, that it will eventually happen. But it's a long road. And the reason they delivered MiGs is Ukrainian pilots can jump in a MiG and fly it. Now, of course, there is some minor differences between, you know, MiG-29 from Poland and MiG-29 from Ukraine as far as Poland may have something different. Or, but, it, but at the end of the day, it's, it's two Ford trucks. One has had some, you know, different wheels put on it. The other. It, it. They're essentially the same aircraft. That the actual handover takeover of those is very li- little to nothing. So they can, they can fly them. Problem is the F-16s, aircraft like that, and they're the ones we throw or throw around. And F-16 makes the most sense. They're made in the most numbers. They're the most widely dispersed. You know, uh, the the issue is the training on them takes a long time. And there's Ukrainian pilots in America at the moment being assessed on how long that would take, and what the numbers we're hearing and figures from how long it's going to take is very wide. We've got you know people in the Ukrainian part, Department of Defense saying months, and we've got people in America saying years. So like everything, it's very hard to cut through what's true. But that would be a big shift in this war too. You talk about shift, but I'm I'm also thinking about I have read that because politics in America do suck. Politics in America they suck. They're terrible. It's my around. favorite thing because it, it affects it, it's, the American politics affect me. Well, not one. Well, I shouldn't say not one bit, but not that much. And I like watching it because it's like a sitcom. Man. Oh my god, it's so terrible. It's, it just makes sense when you put a head to a wall, but. Well, I was going with it is, I said this before, and now some people probably already clicked up this video because they know what I'm about to say, <laughs> is 2024 is coming. Yep. If if the Biden administration doesn't win the war in Ukraine, yes. the Democrats are not going to win the election in 24. Yeah. The, it is this is, not this going, is a big thing. It is not going to, there's, and I'm saying this, I know this is going to piss a lot of you guys off. I'm not trying to be like, go against the Democrats or pick a side here, but there is absolutely no way that they're going to be able to justify the amount of money to the American people that they spent on a war that we have, they're going to, they're going to claim we should have no involvement in. If it goes all the way through to 24, that's true. Is it not? No, absolutely. It's true. And a lot banks that now 
I think I'm correct in saying the elections near the end of 24. It's like October. Yes, but the time. thing is, is when you talk about 24 elections, that really starts at the end of 23. Yeah, you got a long time. Uh, it's a long, and we're already in March. We're late. Yes, mid late March. So now they're thinking about that. Now that's what I'm saying. So yeah. this is what this is. I this is like a precursor to me asking you another question. Yeah, go because. If we know the end of 24 is happening, Charles, we look up when uh, all the election um, TV, you know, like all that st stuff starts happening. I think it's at the end of the year. It doesn't really matter. Mm. So that all starts happening. Yeah. They're going to be using those as ad campaigns yes. to absolutely crush the opposing party, which it won't be that difficult to do at that point because then they're going to talk about here in America, they're going to talk about a couple things. Border, fentanyl. Um, what else are they going to talk about? Crime, inflation, the war in Ukraine, yeah. and how much money. That's going to be the easiest ad campaign to target the yeah. opposing party. So easy. And like everything in this gets politicized. Very so quickly. 100%. Like I, I just named off, and I'm not even, I'm not, I don't even care about it. I'm just telling you, I know exactly what's going to happen. It's going to start, and it's going to be, it's going to thrash the Democratic Party 100%. So what are they going to do? They have two options. Yeah. They got two options. Go hot and heavy, end it sooner. How are they going to do that? Difficult. How are they gonna how are they gonna do that? Or they're gonna have to give it up and say you got to come to a peace terms. Yeah. Well, Trump has already said That's in true. his interview you know, maybe a week back about oh Ukraine may have to think about giving up some land. Now I'm not sure. Is it between Trump and DeSantis for 24? Is that where the Republicans are heading? Something um, like that. But I don't think so. I, I personally, I don't think Trump's. I don't. I don't want. I don't think Trump should run in twenty four oh, myself. Yeah. I don't think so. And a lot of people are like, "Oh my God, Trump might." Even my grandpa wears a twenty twenty four hat. And I'm like, oh, I don't really think he's probably the smartest bet for the Republican Party. But yeah. whatever, it doesn't really matter to me. I don't care. Yeah, I don't care. But but either either way, um, yeah, it, it's become politicized somewhat, and it's weird because and I'll get pushback on this, but it's almost like the hardcore Republicans don't want the war. Like you know what. They really, don't. none of them against do. zero, but which is the opposite historically of this. You'd think the Republicans historically a war to one hundred percent limit war. Russia and limit and but pull down you know Russia's forces one million percent, which doesn't Soviet. make any sense. You know why they don't want it? It's on the shift because it's because it's, because it's, it's under the, the democratic thing. It's, it's because it's the opposite. That's of it's, it's, it's so stupid. No, we talk about this in Australia now. Our politics is nowhere near as you know <laughs> um, like hard. It doesn't really affect the world as much as you guys. But it's not. It's sort of like yeah. Build a road, but <laughs> we have we have build a road, save the kangaroos, no the, the kangaroos, the Labour and Liberal parties, which is sort of like Republican Democrats, yeah. but no one here is extreme. But the opposing side will oppose things just to oppose it, even if it's very good. You know, like Labour's in power at the moment, and they keep like we found the cure to cancer, need this through the Senate, which is like the House of Reps, and the other side would be like, no, f that, that's bullshit. But people oppose politics just to oppose politics, and that's why I think people do swallow their pride a little bit and think about. What do I actually like? Because you can like things from both sides. That's fine. But like you said on this, that I'm not really sure where the, it's looking, but if you would ask me as an outsider and I don't keep up with American politics and I purely see what's online, is the Republicans are probably looking like they'll win in 24. Is that correct? Like, because all I see is a lot of, I see a lot of Democrats. Do you have a fucking don't coin? See, can I like, get a coin, please? Let's oh, flip it, this shit. I, yeah. I, I don't know. But, I, I, I haven't followed but it But if, if the Republicans were to win, theoretically, that would have a big effect on this war, it especially in the, the like you said, the campaign. It would kill the war. Yeah, they would cut. They would cut so quick. The and I've said this, and I know this for a fact. They would cut funding for it so fucking fast. You got to remember, and I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna shout out a, a, a friend of mine, Perrin, on YouTube. He's very good. He does like oh. long one hour breakdowns of really like nitty gritty topics. Like just he would just do one hour on logistics in Russia, and he's incredible research and stuff on it. He really really knows what he's about, and. He talks about this money and how a lot of this, he has a really good video on like the aid and how much money is going. And a lot of the money is actually talked about is replacement value. So say for America or Australia who have given M113 um, old vehicles and we will say, yeah, we've given $100 billion, whatever. The figures are made up a lot also on replacement figures. So we have not used M113 since Vietnam and we bought them in the 50s. But when, when Australia or America donate a vehicle like that, a lot of the money that's coming in this um, packages that we talk about of America or Australia giving this much money is actually summed up of the replacement of that vehicle. Now, an M113 vehicle, Australia and America paid know, 100 grand for, with inflation, maybe half a million for, in the 50s or 60s, where we're now replacing that with a rain metal boxer or something, what costs $15 million. And a lot of these sums are actually off replacement and we talk about this with shells bullets everything that I mean, we're giving 
this 155 shell or this 105 whatever shell to Ukraine, we're not replacing that shell specifically or a lot of times with the same one. We're talking about replacement. A lot of these figures are overblown. So, yeah, yeah, the American has America has spent a hundred billion dollars. Australia has spent X billion dollars, but a lot of that is, yeah, we didn't specifically go and buy that vehicle with that money and give it out. We sent that vehicle and replaced it with a far better one. I'm not and even, a lot of these vehicles are like that. Are completely <laughs> like our M113s. Like I worked in a mechanized infantry unit. Our M113s, our AS4s, have boxes. They're all getting replaced anyway. Like, they were either going to rust out in some field and get hit by... Like, they were literally probably just going to get you know, made uses, as javelin targets. Also, they're about to use as, as, as targets, it was yeah. going to happen. Um, and they are getting replaced by... Uh, well, it's actually up at the moment between a South Korean vehicle, the something, and a Rain Metal vehicle. And that buys into South Korea's a massive superpower as well. It will becoming a military superpower as far as Which military I'm, export. Get as big as you want to be, South Korea. Well, have I you seen what South Korea's exporting to Poland? It's insane uh, so i think it's about six months ago because i was actually with you at the time when it came out but uh poland wants to get like a thousand tanks so they've bought i think it's called the k2 something is a south korean tank it's the most expensive tank in the world um like a new and they have just bought like 200 of them from south korea and the licensing to make like another 800 same with the spgs and a country the size of poland a thousand tanks thousand self-propelled guns like artillery fucking insane and all from, like south korea man is a big player in military tech. Because I know when they came to our trials, because our trials in Australia, but for a new infantry fighting vehicle, were between, it was like the Lynx and the Boxer or something they were called. Which were, And then South Korea came in like, hey, for like this much less, we'll give you this, but this better, better tech. All this. And like apparently the trials blew them out of the water. So South Korea is a big player and they're in a very politically divided part of the world too. But I have no idea how you got to South Korea. We were talking about it before with... Um, how do we even... I, I you talked about it before with North Korea not having... I know, but... Really experienced. I don't know what the hell. How do we even get over to that side of the world? So going back to the whole money thing, which I don't know how you just ended up in South Korea I'm sorry. talking. You yeah. talk, we talked about money, politics in America, and then we ended up in South Korea yeah, in Australian bad. trials. I don't know. That's, that's why we keep <laughs> you around. But so it, it's going to happen. I have no doubt in my mind that if the Republican Party wins, Ukraine is absolutely... F- no one, no one here really cares, and they're going to say the same thing. These same talking points. So that goes back to me asking you. You haven't really answered the question. What in the <laughs> what is the Biden administration going to be able to do in the next, we'll say, twelve months? Not even twelve months. I'm going to say the next eight months. They're going to have to have a short term plan here to actually get the thing ended. What are they going to do? If you're talking at twelve months, very little. Like the the amount of time that these offensives and stuff are going to take and build up equipment, whatever. That's more than that amount of time. We should have started at the start. If realistically, if we started the implementation of this equipment stuff at the start of this, or even better, since 2014, when people say this was coming, everyone knew it was coming. Especially in the, like, if you're in these intelligence circles, they must have known this build-up was coming. They should have started then, and the implementation would have been, and we'd be able to finish it. But eight or 12 months, I don't know. Not much. Because it's not going to, it's like, think about the last eight months realistically how much territorial change have we seen on large scale none we've seen we've seen some big changes in you know, her soul and Kharkiv regions but we haven't seen any movement towards uh, areas that were uh, occupied since 2014 you know around donetsk or crimea and at the end of the day this is going to take a long time and i think it was one of the intelligence services one of the eastern bloc countries came out with you know time plays in russia's favor in this that if they can hold on for a amount of time eventually interest in the West will shift and change. Because it always does. We're like we're like little, I'm not going to call us lemmings. Lemmings is a good, it's a very good term. You know what a lemming is? No. Oh, God, you don't know what a lemming is? <clears throat> oh, hold on. I got I to gotta, I gotta bring something. I'm going to put this on screen as well. Ahead lies the Arctic shore and beyond the sea. And still the little animals surge forward. They reach the final precipice. This is the last chance to turn back. They just dive off the cliff together. Are they doing this on purpose? Like to get to the water or? It's like a mating thing or I don't know. Well, here, look, they just jump off the cliff. So that's the lemming. As you do. That's America. That is literally some of these certain cities that we have that are rolled up in one little ball. Maybe Melbourne or wherever you're talking about. That's literally what it is. Yeah. Well, I think there is, there is this idea and Americans can hate me saying this, but have you seen like when it's like um, 
those movies about like when aliens come come to Earth and it's like a bare Earth with just America on it. I think some people can get this idea that like there's nothing else happening but like America. Because a lot of people haven't been outside of America. They don't, yeah, which never, is a big problem. They've never experienced... Like they think that here in America, th- th- that's a huge issue. A lot of people in America believe that the rest of the world lives like we do. They go to the store like we do. They, they they have access to the internet. They have access to a toilet, for God's sakes. They have drinking water in their house. When in fact, I've been and you've been to some really terrible places where you go there and you're like, wow, this really sucks. Matter of fact, if I were to drive 12 hours south of where I live right now, I can be in one of those countries really quick. Yes. Like, re- and, like and really right there. People need to remember that the majority of the population around the world, not the majority of power, but the majority of population do not have a good view of America. You gotta remember, America's still, what is it, 320 million people? I don't know. We, apparently we're, everybody in America is super racist and we're the worst country. Yeah, yeah absolutely Earth. not. But if you look, if you were to sit in a country, you know, outside, it's pretty easy to look at, like, hang on, what did America do in Iraq and here and there? You know, there's a lot of people with a very bad view of America. A lot of, billions of people. And I think people need to be cognizant that, you know, there's other ideas out there, there's other stuff. And, you know, you may control a lot. You may have the most nukes, but it's not the be all end all. America's a great place. It is great. It's you know the best democracy, well, by evidence it is. Yeah. You know, um, and pe- people will oh, is this and that, but but the evidence is you know it's the most powerful country to ever exist. But as far as people, some a lot of people die and not very fond. Of you know, it's kind of crazy when you say that. You know, I'm thinking about it. I tell you that about Iraq and everything like that. A lot of people hate us for what we did in Iraq. We, did, we toppled the regime that needed to be toppled. Okay, that's great. But the same people that hate us for the stuff we did in Iraq, they love us for the stuff we're doing in Ukraine. Yes. It's very strange. Uh, I, I, so my opinion, and I know I'll, I'll get hate for this and it'll probably transfer into you, I'm sorry, but I completely agree with the ICC wanting to um, arrest Putin. I think the ICC should go and arrest Bush and Blair as well. Like, you know, and, and America hasn't signed on with the ICC. It's the same as Russia and China. Yeah. They both haven't. But realistically, there's war crimes committed. If, if you're if you're putting it down to the commanders, absolutely, like, come on. It's, you know, there was a million dead Iraqis. It's a horrific situation. And we packed up, left it, and it's a shit hole. Yeah. You know, we, and, and, and people from those countries are beautiful. Same as Syria, man. Like, when I was in Syria, the people there, like, every country in the world, and I believe every country in the world, you could go to North Korea or you go to Russia, you go to China, you go to Syria. These countries which are not, you know, friends politically of us, if you went there with just the people in a village, that'd be beautiful people. Same as here. If you went down to some town and I needed help, someone help me. People everywhere are nice. It's the governments which all hate each other and it's bullshit. <laughs> it's hard, man. <laughs> we could go down an entire path. Well, that, which I, don't, I don't know if we should probably go down that path right now. We probably could, though. But where I'm going is the Iraqi people didn't deserve that at all. Neither do, you know, the people of Ukraine. It's 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 tough. But it, it, I think if you are calling out one, you need to call out the other. And if you are saying that this war is a war of aggression, it's bullshit, which I agree with, you also need to say that what America did is absolute bullshit, WMD stuff in Iraq. Come on. Like, you also need to say that was bullshit. And the same as proxy war of, of Vietnam. You know, or the proxy war in Syria. Or the prox- uh, and there's also a lot of stuff that happens in the Philippines that a lot of people don't know about either. The Philippines, I have a lot of friends at work. In the Philippines, a lot of people don't know about that either. We could talk about that for an hour if you really want to talk about that. Nobody even talks about Philippines at trouble. all. <laughs> Philippines is warm, but no Australia one even knows about the Philippines. Every country does it, and it, it yeah. gets a bit sickening. Of like, hey, Africa? there's good guys and bad guys, and Africa's we have our fingers in a lot of pies, and a lot of people we're the bad guys, and and and, and a lot of people think we're bad guys. And the funny thing is, I talk to some people who are very experienced militarily or um, have lived in those countries who are like, hey, I fought there and we are not the good guys in X situation. And I'm like, oh, holy sh**. You know, it, it's, some of that is very wild, man. Like, you know, Australian Indonesia is a big one. You know, there's a complete genocide happening um, to the West Papuans through Papua New Guinea. From, yeah, I didn't from like that. And, you know, at the end of the day, a lot of the arms being supplied to Indonesia who's doing it are Australian weapons, no talus written on the side of them. Like, you know, and, and the West Papuans are a direct relation to the Australian indigenous population. And it's like, this is just swept under the rug because no one gives a shit. There's a lot of stuff going around the world. You know, a lot of fingers point at Ukraine, Russia. There's things just as terrible happening that no one cares about. And it, at the end of the day, it'll, it'll move on. 
and this sort of goes into your point of it. Well, it's got to be we'll move on. And, and in my opinion, is you and I are in circles, which we talk about this, and you know, but a, yeah. a lot of circles it has, and it's it's difficult. It's difficult. Situation. It's going to move on. <coughs> I right when the war ends in Ukraine, you give it forty eight hours. People are going to make a couple of videos of it being rebuilt. It might make it six months later, and everyone's going to forget about it. Yeah, that's exactly what's going to happen. Well, even even when I was there through the conflict, because I was there from before the war till you know, say. A yeah. fair way in, and Zelensky has another. So you saw a massive taper of stuff, like in the beginning, man. Those first days of the war, the amount of NGOs, the amount of people coming in support Ukraine, everyone's profile pictures, all this stuff. Yeah. And then the last time I was there with with these boys, very like you go to the bar where all the NGOs used to go, no one's there, and all these NGOs are now doing other stuff, and it tapers off. I think, Zel- but on your point, I think Zelensky does know this. That's why he's pushing so hard on all this. Um, like marketing stuff. Because at the end of the day, whether you love or hate Zelensky, at the end of the day, a president is a leader also online. Like you have to market yourself too. And people go, oh, when he's on the cover of Vogue, he has to do that shit Because he has to be everywhere, get his face out there because support, at least publicly, will taper. I'm not sure about militarily. But it's de- if it, he it, needs it, to be if, the, pu- if it publicly awards. tapers, then it's going to, pub- it's going to taper... Yeah. militarily there's yeah. no well, way in a democracy th- it has to yeah, yeah those go hand in hand 100 yeah. percent. um and and Zelensky has to be on the front page of this and that and that's the reason he's been i think recently in trying to put his face out there more is to gain the support because yeah. they know this like you know you think you and i think about this a bit imagine being imagine being Zelensky. how much oh. he thinks about this yeah. and then and, and if if ukraine fails Zelensky is f-ed. is f-ed. Everybody, uh, everybody there is pretty much f-ed, to be honest with you it's it's but the thing yeah. is, if Ukraine fails and the West fails, and the West really does, that's what it goes back to saying, if Biden, they, if the Democratic Party wants to get elected, guess what they can't do? They can't fail in Ukraine. Because right now, it's 110% on the back and the shoulders of the Democratic Party here in America. Mm. It is. Is it not Charles or no? I mean, they, like everybody that's on the, the right side. Democrats are always also the ones that signed the um, security treaties back in the 90s for Ukraine as well and didn't uphold them. So that's a big one too. Uh, that's a, there's a lot of stuff that happened in the 90s. It was a little weird too. Yeah. It actually happened underneath desks inside the White House. It was kind of weird. A lot of stuff in the 90s. Weird. Yeah. <laughs> Man, American <laughs> politics. <laughs> you guys have too much money, too much power, too many nukes. Uh, I wish I had I wish I had more money and not enough power. I don't give a shit about anything else. <laughs> well, I, I appreciate it. We're good. I'm gonna see you tomorrow because guess what? You're staying in my you're staying in my house. Staying so in the guest house. Yeah, and he's guest room. Guest room. <laughs> He's wearing clothes in my house as soever he's wear. He doesn't walk around naked, which is kind I of I can good start thing. if you'd like. Nah, it's bloody cold nah, here. Nah, nah, I don't know about that. It's like I 10 degrees. Keep it cold. Me, maybe you and Charles can get naked together and just walk around. Yeah, I won't be here, though. It's been done. <laughs> well, I'll see you guys tomorrow. I do love you, motherfuckers. We're out.